In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear friend, it is Sunday, the fifth day of November. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that your plans for me are far greater than I could ever imagine. Thank you that you have a purpose for me that includes the manifestation of the desires of my heart and even blessings that I have never dreamt of. Heavenly Father, I know that to receive all you have for me, I must stay in alignment with your will and your word. I know that if something is missing in my life, I am not waiting on you. You are waiting on me. I repent for the areas where I have missed it. Dear God, I ask you to forgive me and help me get back on my way to victory in you. Lord, I ask you to reveal to me the areas where I have not been walking in love, places where I have pent up, pent up heart, rejection, bitterness, or anger. Help me to forgive and be healed emotionally. And help me to let go completely to give you room to do your work in me. Help me to humble myself and ask forgiveness of those who I have treated poorly, spoken to more harshly than I should have or neglected in any way. I desire to obey your word and live a life filled with love for you and others. I commend to you today that I am going to begin each day in faith, believing for good things, looking at life through the lens of faith, and seeking your will in everything I say and do. Thank you for your blessings and your love for me and for guiding me unto all the truth. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friend, I remain your priest and servant, Father C.K., wishing you a productive Sunday. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friend, I'm sure you're very well. It is Sunday, the fifth day of November in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2023. We are on the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. And in our November for candidates, today it is day eight. Our first reading today is taken from Prophet Malachi, chapter 1, verses 14, chapter 2, verses 2, then 8 to 10. Our response audio psalm is taken from Psalm number 131. Our second reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 7 to 9, then verse 13. And our gospel passage is taken from Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 to 12. At first sight, today we are confronted with a very negative theme uniting the first reading and the gospel. They both target unworthy and exploitative religious leaders. Both, however, in their final part, point to the positive value underlying the critique that all members of the covenant people are bound up together as one family under the fatherhood of God. The book of Malachi comes from the time after the return from the exile in Babylon when 
under the rule of the Persian Empire, the Jews had been allowed to rebuild the temple. The prophet has a high regard for temple worship and the responsibility of the priestly order who serve there. Hence, the warning to the priests in the first reading that their poor conduct and corrupt administration are a breach of their covenant responsibilities both to God and to the people as a whole. It is a rare, I mean it is rare for the Old Testament to speak of God as Israel's father. Thus, appeal at the end of the reading is quite striking. For Israelites to break faith with each other is tantamount to reading family ties for the covenant has united them all in one family under one God. The gospel taken from Matthew uh, 23 comes from the final stages of Jesus' ministry in Jerusalem when he warns the people and his disciples against the scribes and Pharisees. Jesus seems to accept the continuing religious authority of these experts, even telling his followers to listen to what they say. Interpreters have long been heard put to explain how Christians of Matthew's generation could see themselves as still somehow under the authority of the synagogue. The gospel seems to have preserved some very early tradition recording Jesus' critique of the religious leaders of his time in order to set up a contrast with the very the way leadership is run in the later Christian community. The critique actually goes to the very heart of Matthew's presentation of Jesus as an authoritative interpreter of the Torah, that is, the law of Moses. The scribes and Pharisees bring to their interpretation of the Torah a host of rulings from their own tradition that, instead of making it something livable, and life-enhancing actually make it burdensome and crushing. Their scribal and religious expertise simply serves to lay heavier burdens upon an already burdened people. It also serves to enhance their own power and authority leading to the kind of honor seeking behavior in public that Jesus lampoons and condemns. In contrast, Matthew consistently portrays Jesus as the one who, a son of God and servant, comes to bear and lift the burdens of afflicted humanity. It is all summed up in the invitation, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. This we read in chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. In fact, the sense of people as burdened and of Jesus as the one who looks upon them with compassion and acts towards them accordingly runs throughout the narrative. 
Listen to this. Chapter 4, verses 23 to 25. Chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. Verse 9, uh, chapter 9, verses 10 to 13. Chapter 9, verses 35, 36. Chapter 12, verses 15 to 21. Chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Chapter 15, verses 32. And also 23, verse 23. The entire Sermon on the Mount, that is chapters 5 to 7, is simply a sustained and authoritative interpretation of the Torah in the light of this vision. It is this understanding and practice of Jesus that sets the pattern for the way in which leadership in the community of the kingdom should be exercised, since all belong equally to the one family of God, God the Father. And since all teaching flows directly from the continuing presence of the one teacher and reason Lord in the community, there is no place for horrific, I mean, honorific titles and practices that might suggest otherwise. The pattern of leadership has been set forever by the servant one who came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. The greatest, therefore, must be your servant. The Christian tradition has not taken this instruction literally. All clerics, from priests up, are customarily addressed in some form of as father. Now, with the widespread exposure of so many issues that are happening in the world, and in many cases, the failure of authorities to handle effectively the crisis facing the contemporary church, the time has surely come to ask a few questions. Where do I stand when it comes to the authenticity of studying for Jesus? Can I be counted as not just an authority? Can I be counted as a missionary of truth and social justice? Paul recalls of his pastoral concern for the Thessalonians in the second reading. It provides a helpful position to implement, or I mean to complement the overall theme. And the question is, can we, can we be counted as people who can stand for the others? Can we give the rightful teaching to the people? If I was to be called, can we be, can we, do we have this father that I stand to be counted? He is my father. God the father. Because the tragedy we have is, eh, we still want to remain in God, but we have got our own way of living. We want religion minus the cross and God the father. We want to be everything. We want to be worshippers. We want to be the worshipped. We want to be everything. Today we are challenged. It can't be that way. And of course, the other thing, and this is a point I would really want to talk to the young people, the respect for the authority. And this is not just the young people, but every one of us, especially following small, you know, you may put parentheses, small rules, but it's important. Dear good people, it can only get better. Thank you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Sunday.